This might get weird. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Well, then cheers, Grace Helbig. Cheers, Memory Heart. Woo-hoo. You guys, welcome to a This Might Get Weird, where I might get stuffy because I'm in North Carolina and my allergies are going off. You do look like, with all the primary colors around you, a bit like a Zyrtec commercial right now. <laughs> really? Because I'm sitting on a blue couch, I'm wearing yellow, and I'm naturally red. Well, um, no, you got green behind you. Okay, outdoors. okay. Um, yeah, I... I've noticed something about myself recently. Okay. I've noticed that I don't just sneeze like once or twice. If I sneeze, I'm sneezing like 10 times in a row. Really? Oh no. When did this happen? I think I've kind of always been like this, but I didn't clock it till the other, (laughs) till honestly, till I was on a plane. And I was like, this is embarrassing because if I heard someone else sneeze 10 times on a plane, I'd be like immediately evacuate. Yeah. Yeah. Write it down. (laughs) Talk Mm -hmm. about it on the podcast. The, uh, yeah, because at that point, how do you indicate to people that it's not time to say God bless you until the end? That's the thing. <laughs> Sweet Ashley, I was like going through the house and I hear her like, she's picking hydrangeas. Ashley's my friend I'm staying with, yeah. listeners. And she's like picking hydrangeas. I mean, like, God bless you and God bless you. And I'm just like, at what number sneeze? Yeah. Do A, do you say like, knock it off? Yeah. Or what number sneeze do you hear someone and you naturally go like, now this is making them self-conscious? Yeah, four. It's four for me. Is it if, four? Because if okay. there's, if it's naturally twos. And then yeah. like if there's a third, you're like, oh, then they got a little extra. And then when there's four, I'm like, this could go anywhere. This could now be let nonstop. Me, let me ask you this. If you were somewhere and someone. OK, mm-hmm. two questions, two things, two, two things. things. Oh, yeah. If you were somewhere and someone sneezed near you, mm-hmm. what, sh- A, what is your go-to first response? Because you're tight, God bless you, uh, bless you, whatever. And B, if they sneeze multiple times, do you mix it up? Yeah, so this happened, like I was on, um, <laughs> it's very interesting. because I've been questions. Hard-hitting. I I went home uh, to Philly for a little bit and came back, and I, I've been wearing my mask on planes just because, like, my Good white girl. blood cell count is still, you know, trying to climb back up after chemo. So it's yeah. in my best interest to wear masks in Absolutely. those close spaces. But with that, I've become very, very like um, sensitive to people coughing on planes, and like there was a woman hacking oh, like God. to the point that i was being that person of like looking around with furrowed <laughs> eyebrows but i'm like what do, what's that gonna do just let her know like i hear her <laughs> like i'm now this like angry like get off my lawn person i know but i was in the lax um bus that takes you to the uber uh, la exit la exit there great you go. pun terrible service yeah i was in there recently and in the back and it's super crowded and everyone's crammed in and i was just sitting there and a girl next to me sneezed and i just auto said god bless you but she was wearing headphones so she didn't oh. hear me but everyone else it was just like this awkward quiet lingering Mm -hmm. like does someone say thank you on her behalf to me right because everyone else heard me (laughs) acknowledge (laughs) this girl you've got to close the circle (laughs) right and how do i now just like click around on my phone like that didn't bother me or feel weird at all (laughs) to not have a thank you (laughs) totally well i know like the origin of it i guess is essentially and i'm sure i have this wrong I don't know if it was during the Puritan times. I don't know when the hell it was. But yeah. it was something like when someone sneezes, they're either like vulnerable Dying. to like that's when demons can come in. Yeah. Or like something's happening. So you say God bless you to like like ward off the demons. That's I, th- I thought it was like, yeah, a sign that like, oh, you could be terminally ill. So like you need God's blessing. Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> That's literally based in absolutely nothing other than so me imagining thought- that during like, I don't know, the bubonic plague when someone would sneeze, it'd be like, they're going to get the plague. God bless oh, you. Oh, so you were thinking it more like someone sneezes and you're like, God rest her soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're like, on their way out. There they go. I think it's actually like, a oh, shit. This is when demons can enter their body. Say God bless you to keep them away. Again, yeah, yeah. I've I turned that. it into a Ghostbusters thing. I, I mean, hey, it sounds like it could be a thing. Now, How else would it be? Here's a question. Yeah. One, what does 
Gesundheit mean? Is it a German word or it's is it a German made up word. word? And two, how do you spell it? <laughs> That's a great question. I'm G- looking it up. Oh, when oh, I went, wow. I went back to Philly and Tim and I watched the spelling bee. Um, <gasps> it was incredible. It always is. And I always miss it. The production value is hilarious because they have like sweeping cameras and just the most unoffensively bland like talking heads at a desk with their hands folded being like do they he's been here for the last four years and this is his last year and it's his time to shine and it's always they interview the family and there's always a younger daughter that's like it was her first year and she just looks at the camera like she's about to dominate and it's so great (laughs) but they would know how to spell it yeah uh it's a tough one it's g-e-s-u-n-d-h-e-i-t that didn't like make what? Con- nope. And it's it German. is German. It yeah. literally means health. Healthy okay. hood. Gazun <laughs> height. Healthy hood. Anyway. There we, go. <laughs> we got some info. Um wow. Okay. The more we has, know. has the spelling bee, national spelling bee, have they like incorporated like the 360 cam or anything? Like no, have they modernized it, it? it? There's a lot of room for exciting technology to sweep okay. in. And it is like, I didn't realize that it's only up to a certain age group. Like you can only compete um, up to like 13 years old or 14 years yeah. old. And so that I don't fully understand. Like, why is there not like a senior bracket of like actual like high school seniors? It's only this like very like middle school age bracket. Oh, I thought you meant like old people. And that, that is too. what I would watch. That too. I wish that there was like a full on like, here's the millennial spelling bee. Like that would be fascinating. The kids are incredible. They make it like an event and there's all the kids like sitting in the audience that have, you know, were up on stage and they're all like practicing trying to spell while they get their word and then they're cheering on their friends. It's so cute. There's um, definitely like room for more exciting coverage for sure. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But they did change the last round, which I thought was really fun. When it gets down to two people, they do what I didn't realize because I haven't watched in I don't know how long. They each come on stage one at a time and stand over a buzzer. And it's like a speed round. They have 90 seconds. Yeah. To spell as many words as they can. Every time they're finished spelling, they hit the buzzer and the guy gives them the next word. They both get the same words. And it's just whoever has spelled the most correct words in 90 seconds. I was like, this is fun. This is an exciting way to finish it. Yeah. So one of them goes into like noise canceling headphoneville and doesn't Mm -hmm. hear them. And then so, oh man, that's great because... I've always thought with spelling bees, like, it really is the friggin' luck of the draw. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, they are just randomly picking words. But if you are up there and they give you Gesundheit and you're yeah. like, my grandma's German. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, then you yeah. luck out. Because, you know, there some was... of them are just like, oh, I can't believe I'm getting this word. I've known how to spell it since I was two years old. There was, like, ashwagandha was a word. And I was like, Stop. well, that's very popular now. That's a lucky yes. word. That's the only word I recognized out of all of the words for two hours that I watched them spell. It was a natural <laughs> but, stimulant. Yeah. It was great, though. Oh, speaking of intense kids. Yeah. Well, so I've been with kids the last, like, three days. Because yeah, Ashley has three small ones. You've been... Uh, you've had adventures. Tell me all about it. Because I've I also, been all over um, the place. I've, I've been off of the internet, but I've checked in a little bit. So, yeah, what's going on? I haven't been posting a lot about it. You know how I get. I'll be like... Oh. <laughs> it's like, here's a full day of hour-by-hour activities yeah. or radio silence. And then I'll see you in two months. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm so bad at it. But so I've been around um, children more. And these are... I've said it once. I've said it a million times. Like, the most well-behaved kids of all time. Um, Incredible. Like... Like she's got them trained in That's like a very nice. sweet, nurturing way. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It doesn't feel, yeah, over the top. Yeah. Like, like they, they have a very like reward system based things, you know, like her little, her uh, oldest Boone who turned eight this past weekend when I got here, he like comes in and he's like, can I trade in my snack for 15 more minutes on the switch? You know what I mean? Like wow. he's like bartering like, yeah. screen time and stuff, you know, <laughs> which I appreciate. Yeah. You that learn. would be me. What the value of things. <laughs> uh, but so yesterday we went to a swim meet. Okay. Have okay. you ever been? I did not grow up with pools. No. Um, like we didn't have a swim team in our high school. Oh, really? We, yeah. We didn't have a pool at our high school. But also too, like there was 
one like community pool in the middle yeah. of the county like there were no swim meets and now I feel like swimming is like a very big thing with kids like I feel like all yeah. my friends kids do it yeah. and I'm like is that just because there's more access or is it like our millennial asses are like how about this non-contact sport yeah we it's, don't it's want you to have concussions it's like its own culture like I grew it up is. going I grew up going to like we went to a pool but like I felt very much like misfit kids there I, like I was oh, never yeah. good we learned how to swim at the YMCA and they I think I said this before they gave me a gift certificate or a certificate when you are finished and they tell you what kind of fish you are based on your skill sets I was a guppy so I was like oh <laughs> I've never this heard is- this this is fine because I also I don't like the water it, it yeah. didn't come naturally to me so never never we, has yeah we belong to a swim club but it was always like a culture of these like upper middle class like popular kids that would be part of the swim team yeah. and it was like what they did all their summers growing up so they had like their own right. insulated like community and it was I when I was a senior uh, before I went to college, I was trying to do as many jobs as I could to make money before I left. And I worked the front desk of a different swim club. Um, and it was the same thing that I was like, these, this is a whole yeah. world that I don't know I belong to at all. I had never experienced it. And so, and she was like, there's only five or six this summer, but he goes, she's basically, she's just like, Hey, this is cheaper than swim lessons. Yeah. Like yeah. they go there twice go. a week for practice. <laughs> yeah. They're going to learn skills. She's like, hey, he can swim 25 yards. I'm not worried about him at the pool anymore. Amazing. Yeah. Like it's not competitive. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. I'm allergies like crazy. One second. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but so anyway, we go and it's like packed. Like parents really? are in it. We show up with two Yetis with cocktails in them of course nice excellent and it's at the country club even though like you don't have to be a member to do the swim stuff and like they have a bar there and i'm just walking around (laughs) and it's like just like dads holding beers and i'm like oh i could get down with this culture yeah yeah yeah. it's just like folding it's like camping chairs by a pool and every all the adults secretly drinking i mean that sounds like that's what children's sports have always been (laughs) i love it and her and her little son immediately i could tell he's just in it for the snacks oh yeah and she was like he does this because he knows as soon as he finishes one of the races he just he's gonna open a new snack he's doing goldfish he's doing crustables he got a cookies and cream popsicle when we went to go get another round from the bar you know but it was just so cute and like like well-rounded because some kids were doing it in tents and you could see Mm -hmm. like you could see the swim team that you were like oh you guys want to do well yeah I'm I'm pulling for the bad news bears you know yeah I want an underdog story but also I can barely doggy paddle he gets up there and his part of the relay is like the first one is like a a breaststroke or like you know one of those and this old hag by the sidelines because I guess they have people from each team timing it and then they take the average time you know what I mean so it's not like I'm in it for my team you know what I mean okay okay she DQs him (gasps) he's eight why what was he He doing he was coming in last place (laughs) let the man finish Uh, like literally he got out of the pool and we just saw him walk over to his friends and go man i'm the worst (laughs) he's he's just there to socialize but we looked at another race which he got dq'd again (laughs) and this one judge had dq'd all of the same team but the team she was with didn't dq them now i smell a conspiracy yeah someone get a documentary crew out there Stat. at that point i'd had four vodka sodas with a splash of grapefruit <laughs> and i was ready to expose you the truth we're not gonna stand for this kind of injustice <laughs> these days i love trying to eat healthy and i love when eating healthy is easy and that's why hungry root is my jam hungry root is the easiest way to eat healthy they send you fresh high quality groceries simple recipes and essential supplements it's like your personal assistant for healthy living 
What you do is you take a fun short quiz. Woohoo! We all love quizzes. And Hungry Root will get to know your personal health goals, what you like to eat, and more. And then they'll build you a personalized cart with all of your grocery needs for the week and give you delicious recipe recommendations to put those groceries to use. Each order is fully customizable. So you can take their suggestions or you can choose anything you want. They've got fresh produce, they've got high quality meat and seafood, they got healthy snacks, smoothies, sweets, ready to eat meals, kids snacks and meals, vitamins and supplements and so much more. Everything from Hungry Root follows a simple standard. It's got to taste good. It's got to be quick to make and contain whole trusted ingredients. I love Hungry Roo, especially if you have any dietary restrictions, they have so many different options, gluten-free, dairy-free, etc. They got you covered. They come with recipes that honestly you can put together in sometimes under five minutes. Like I had this um, cranberry chicken salad that was so delicious and seemed like I got it at an expensive restaurant, but I put it together myself in my semi-clean kitchen for uh, within five minutes. It's fantastic. And right now, Hungry Root is offering, this might get weird listeners, 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash TMGW to get 40% off of your first delivery and get your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash TMGW. Do not forget to use our link so they know that we sent you. Y'all, spring has done sprung, okay? There's only uh, 10 or more days left of it or so. So if you haven't started spring clean and get into it, all right? Whether that's stocking up on cleaning supplies or swapping out your winter clothes for a little more scandalous ones, make sure you are using Ibotta to get real cash back on every purchase. Ibotta is gonna help you out this summer season, okay? Hot girl summer, Ibotta summer, okay? Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every Every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing the average ibotta user earns get this 256 per year yes that's 256 dollars per year that could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip or maybe you've wanted to go on a little vacation but you can't not get over the price of flights don't worry ibotta has bought you some more um uh, dollars towards things you actually want other apps give you points that don't really amount to much but with ibotta just add your offers in the app upload your receipt and you can get real cash that you can cash out to your bank account paypal or gift card so join over the 50 million users and earn cash back every time you shop from over 2700 brands and retailers including all your favorite grocery stores lowe's macy's sephora best buy all the good stuff so right now ibotta is offering our listeners five bucks just for trying ibotta by using the code Get weird when you register. So just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code GETWEIRD. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code GETWEIRD for $5. Wow. But I just I just had so much fun. I was like, oh, this is like a fun summer activity that I didn't know. Like, I feel like yeah. swimming is very tennis. You know what yeah. I mean? It's yeah. like oh, your access just- to it. Sorry, go ahead. You love tennis. I just got re into tennis big time. Wait, watching it or playing it? Watching it with the want to play it, but I don't have a racket these days. Um, But I just got into Breakpoint, which is basically the Formula One drive to survive of tennis. Stop. And I burned, Tim introduced me to it when I was hanging out with him. Is it on Netflix? It's on Netflix. It's oh, two seasons. I burned through it. Tennis men are big bratty babies. It is yeah. wild. And so you're just watching these big brats throw hissy fits and it's fascinating. But now I'm mm. like so in. I'm already looking at like US open tickets. I'm like, Ooh, how do I I go? will go with you because once again, it's a spectator sport where I know no one's really going to get hurt. And if they are, it's because they're like pulling something. There's yeah. no contact. And you can like sit in the stands and drink and wear a cute outfit. Totally. And the U.S. Open, which I never realized the whole like business or season of tennis is like the culmination of the end of the season. It's the last Grand Slam. Oh, so it's okay. like the big to do. They all have their own like essence. But I was like, man, I'm back into tennis in a big way now. Let me ask you this. Yeah. 
would you play pickleball with me? Because yeah, that is something I want to get into and yeah. I haven't taken the leap. But I mean, the name alone, I'm sold. Yeah. I mean, we learned how to play pickleball in high school. It was like a thing. Pickleball's been around that long? Yeah. For, we Not had, to say you're old. <laughs> no, that's the weird thing about it being so popular now is that oh. I only know it as this thing we learned to play in high school, which felt so bizarre. And we would have a pickleball tournament at our high school, which like teachers would enter and it'd be this whole big thing that would happen at night. And it was like this really fun like event that I thought was like only our school's thing. And now cut yeah. to now and it's like the biggest sport around that I'm like I want to play because it is like a equalizer tennis is tough because you have to like be good at it to enjoy playing it and I am wildly inconsistent at tennis but pickleball I think would be much lower stakes much more fun Uh uh-huh well two things one the first time I ever saw a pickleball court yeah. was at Rosanna Pancino's house. And mm, I thought she, she just got a, a tiny tennis court because of her size. <laughs> I was like, wow, you really just shrunk down a tennis court because you are a gnome. Yeah, I love wow, you, you, Rosanna. But I was like, good for you. Good yeah. for you. A, a big equalizing yeah, court. A sport that you love. Wow. And then also, is- I love that you thought it might have just been local to your high school because I definitely go back and think about games I played in PE in yeah. or gym class in elementary school where I'm like, did our, did my teacher make that up? Right. Or do schools across the nation play something called prisoner ball? We played, yeah, a version of that. You I know what I'm like, talking about? I was like, I grew up and I was like, ball? prisoner ball. I feel like we played a version of this and or you've told me about this and that's why it sounds familiar. (laughs) Well, I just, I mean, like, listeners, I want you to uh, DM us, text us, not text us, they don't have our numbers, (laughs) tweet us, my zero zero text, uh, kicking in. Uh, Let us know what's the weirdest named game you played in elementary school, because I'm sure there's some that now you'd be like, ooh, yeah, that wasn't good. Didn't age well. Yeah, because we had a whole semester in my high school gym class. We've talked about this, learning square dancing. Well, yeah. And you know, and I told you recently I I was walking beans and I was like, oh, they're learning to dance. Yes. At this elementary school, the like the boys are secretly loving it and not admitting it. I can see. (laughs) Yeah. It was to Abba. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of dancing, I just finished yeah. that Dancing for the Devil documentary. Have you watched I that? I did, on- too. We <sighs> watched it two nights ago. Wild. 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 Ongoing. Wild. Seems like a parody of culture right now that TikTok yes. dancers are finding themselves in a high control group based on the love of Jesus Christ. <laughs> and the cult. And what's crazy, okay, is... As we do when yeah. I'm looking for things to talk about on this podcast, I go, I went to eonline.com. Yes. Yes. And the number one story is Miranda, the subject of it being like, well, now my life's in danger ever since this doc came out because yeah. people are harassing me. Let me tell you, I, oh, it is a documentary maker's dream for it to be about TikTok dancers. Mm-hmm. And it is my night, my cringe meters nightmare. Yeah, because the amount of times it cut like the end, the end scene where the sister is just TikTok yeah. dancing in the rain. Yeah, it's too much. Yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> too much. It's I was like, I feel your pain. I feel for your loss. We got to stop. Yeah, I see how I feel like I've been pushed out of the Internet. Yeah, this world. I don't belong there, no. but it's massive. And Let's, it's a lot of just two part like boom, boom. I can't. I can't like, the TikTok whole time dancing? being like, is this dancing? Are oh. they dancing or are they just sort of like synchronized move? Like, what moving. is this? <laughs> yeah, is this actually clowning? Is this right. miming? Right. No, truly. Like, I respect the art form. I know it takes skill, but yeah. you can really, you can really question skill level when you watch crunk dancing in slow mo. Yes. And also I was like, like what is he okay? These yeah, that crunk dancing in slow mo, I was like, they really are making these dancers look like shit. <laughs> they I know. are really taking the essence out of this dance and putting it on display in a way that doesn't like he doesn't look this doesn't look good, I it think. It doesn't look good. 
But also, I'm just fascinated by the camera effects that TikTok dances do. Those like how it shakes, the camera shakes yes. in like real time as if it's like handheld and like punches in. That I'm like, yes. what would this look like with none of these little shaky effects? Would this and, be so wildly unimpressive? <laughs> and <laughs> also, is that done in post or right. is that in camera? I like, are they just post. taking like one? Are they just doing a straight on video of them? Yeah. And then they're like, now. Yeah. Do your think, work, AI editor. Yeah, I think that's what they're I think there's a bunch of presets that people use because they're all the same thing. It's all this like handheld movement and yeah. it like moves with them side to side and then it'll like shake punch in a little mm -hmm. bit. I'm like, wow, it punctuates the dancing, but it feels like it's doing all the heavy lifting. You know what uh, I think would be a fun challenge? Yeah. Is if we found out what those presets are and like made you do a dance mm -hmm. that then with those presets looked incredibly impressive right right i feel like we tried to do that in our original this might get show that we like tried to learn a dance with someone that was like an internet dancer but yes what's his face oh and memory. i was like taking it too seriously you were very good <laughs> i was no you were great terrified to be there uh um, speaking of terrifying one. Yeah. I do have uh, something. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this is back to kid world. Okay. So she has three kids. One of them is like, I think two. Okay. No, maybe she's three. I don't know. So she's about to a, be three. Not a baby. Not a baby. A toddler. She's a toddler. Okay. Very adorable. Okay. So cute. So sweet to beans. Who's sleeping soundly beside <laughs> me right now. <laughs> <Little nugget>. Um, <laughs> But so she's so funny and she's like, forms that. she just got like the tiniest little voice. You know, and she's just being like, where is, where is the lady with the dog? You know, like she's just, yeah. she's, she can do sentences, like full sentences, which is amazing. But so we're out here on this very porch. Yeah. And we're talking and, uh, you know, she's, she's asking me questions about beans and then I'm asking her kid questions of like, do you like frozen? Like, I don't know. Like whatever you ask <laughs> yeah. kids, you know, you're like, yeah. here's a thing. Like, what's your favorite color? Like, yeah. what's your favorite snack? Like that kind yeah. of thing. Asking her random shit. And then, so creepy. Mm -hmm. She just looks at me and she goes, do you trust me? What? And I go, <laughs> I go, what? And she goes, do you trust me? Oh my and I was God. like, do you know what that means? And honestly, she said it probably 20 other times since I've been here. It's, <laughs> it's clear she like heard it from a movie. Yeah. But there was yeah. like a brief moment where I was like, <gasps> my life is going to be forever changed. Like, what is the <laughs> next thing that could happen that's the creepiest she's, thing? Like, does she all of a like, sudden I'm drop gonna... the voice and it's like, I'm 45, bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been scamming this family. You know, like, what's... I was like, what? Sure, I like, trust you. Take my hand and I'm going to walk you into this wardrobe in my mom's room. It's going to take us to Narnia. Here yeah, or like, yeah, exa well, that would be the ideal. I right. was more like, do you trust me? And I was going to see like, oh this my God. is where I bury cats. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ashley comes back. I'm like, uh, does she say, do you trust me a lot? She was like, what? How do you? She was like, Merritt, do you know what trust means? And she was like, do you trust me? And I was like, okay, she's saying it in front of her mom. But there was a minute there where I was like, oh no, this is the end of Sixth Sense. What oh is about to go God. down? Honestly, that's kind of amazing. That Top your 10 kids walking around creepiest. in the world putting adults completely on edge by asking yeah. a very simple yet profound question that exactly. is exactly uh, from an emotional intelligence beyond her age group yeah, that's so it's, crazy it's like the concept of trust is beyond <laughs> your two years but like and she's got, and she's got like these little eyes and she scrunches up her nose and she's got like a little crooked smile so it was just oh like do God. you trust me and I was like <laughs> we were just talking about cats and dogs and like puppies and roof roof and now all of a sudden it's like would you like to get to know me on a deeper level, oh, adult woman? My God, I love that. I was that. shook. I love that. I was like, I, cool, my first reincarnated kid experience. Here we go. Here we go. It's happening. I knew. Um, oh, wow. Amazing. Also, shout out to everyone that um, a few weeks ago when we asked if babies need to be walked, provided oh, yeah. incredibly... <laughs> serious and helpful uh commentary on that situation thank you to all the dms i got really appreciate <laughs> it <laughs> um, Do babies need to be walked so fucking funny i got sent a bunch of this sad update maybe you got it too of charlotte oh, no. the stingray 
not pregnant. Not pregnant, unfortunately. She, is she just bloated? Is it a tumor? They, What's going on? I read an article this morning. They said that she has developed a rare reproductive disease <gasps> that has negatively impacted her reproductive system. Oh, no. She was like way past her like due date or like, yeah. you know, the amount of months or weeks it would take for a pregnancy to finish. And then like it's wild now because the owner of this um, aquarium has to like do interviews saying like, um, this was not a scam. I've yeah. never been a liar. This was not anything made up, but people do that. People have their own thoughts. Uh, this is like an NPR article I was reading this morning that Yikes. they were uh, doing an interview for that. It's like, yeah, if you work at a zoo or an aquarium, mm -hmm. like you do not know or can control the power of like the memeing of an animal, you know, right. like the way that this story took off and now it's like all this attention of people like counting down her pregnancy and then it's like oh actually she's really sick and it's really sad so yeah I mean it's kind of like well I don't know I don't I feel like I caught on to the Charlotte story a little late when it was already yeah. like when it already peaked but it's like how people don't tell people they're pregnant to like whatever trimester yeah yeah you know what I mean I'm like respect this stingray's privacy yeah. There was Beans. just the swirling it's rumors. Degrees. Why are you shivering? <laughs> oh, Beans. Oh, there's the swirling rumors that it could be a shark stingray hybrid. So, of course, well, the internet takes that. What do you expect? They run with it. Now we've got countdowns on Charlotte's pregnancy. Well, but, speaking um, of, have you yeah. seen the craziness that are sharks this summer? No, what's going on with sharks? Oh, I fell into a shark algorithm last night on TikTok. Okay. What are they doing well, now? Nothing. They've never done what. anything good. Other than that one shark guy that we talked to for that series we did for Discovery. Yeah. That guy was great. And he that honestly, guy was great. He, his passion for his research on sharks, like connected for me in a way that I was like, yeah, protect those animals. Well, yes, I, I like a shark conservationist my friend mm -hmm. katie like is from florida and she's always like reposting stuff our friend katie um oh katie yeah, yeah katie <laughs> um because i mean because she's like this that's their territory you yeah. guys like you know don't fuck with them however and mm. now that i say this people are going to get it on their phone the sharks are like coming out in crazy masses there's been like I think two shark attacks in Southern California, like in the last few days. Oh, damn. And like, a, like there's so many great whites, like off the coast of Massachusetts. And I saw some like aerial shot um, in maybe in LA. Like they're just, they're coming closer. Like in the yeah. way that like whales are acting crazy. Yeah. Sharks have now started. Yeah. And they're like coming in herds when they don't Ooh. even normally like herd that way. The sharks are pissed. Yeah. The sharks are pissed. It's the new, it's Sharknado summer. Uh, that's very unsettling. Cause there's I'm staying out of the water. I, that's, I, look, the ocean has never been a place for me. Like, oh. the, like the swimming community, the ocean is just, you know, it's not my home. I don't no. belong there. And mm -mm. I am so okay respecting those boundaries. I don't, oh, yeah. I can uh, appreciate it from afar, but there is like, um, you know, all of these movies culturally now that are like thematically like it's the end of times. And mm -hmm. then you have like actual news stories of like the sharks are gathering and they're getting closer. They're it's getting like, pissed. They're saying no stay wonder. out of our ocean. <laughs> We're all full of anxiety all the time. My God. Truly. No, I'm the same way. I'm like, I love looking at the ocean. Don't even need to be in the sand. I'll see it yeah. from a patio. I'll see it from a bar. Don't yeah. even need to be in the sand. I'm like, I can get just, uh, who's tanning these days? You know what I mean? Like, uh, what it are we doing? It feels scandalous to do that, you know? It feels scandalous. And even like when people be like, well, let's just take a dip in, ride a couple waves. Zero percent chance. I'm fine. Um, <laughs> no, it's got to be crystal clear. And even still, I'm kind of forcing myself. Yeah. Um, but when we were talking about like swim meets and I was like, well, I didn't have access to that. Well, I'm a grown up now. Yeah. I can access <laughs> pools. Yeah. Exactly. And I'll find them. I do yep. not need to get in with sharks. And I've told you this before. My sister is so scared of sharks. Yeah. That like a scary as a, thing. As a kid, we'd be in a pool. Yeah. And I could say, Annie, have you heard they discovered invisible sharks? And she'd get out of the pool. Rude. Very rude. <laughs> but 
she would also cool. be like, oh, cool. You see that drain? That's where it comes out of. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it yeah. was mutual fuckery. <laughs> yeah, that's um, yeah. The, the Jaws ride at Disney fucked me up and I was good on sharks for the rest of my life. I mean, you saw the shark 40 experience we tried to do oh, was God. Um, one of the most traumatizing things I've done as an adult. And oh. maybe the most embarrassing thing I've ever done on the Internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a. Uh, Hard to listen to, hard to watch. <laughs> oh my gosh, I had a dream last night that I was at a wedding and Marky Mark was one of the groomsmen. Oh. And I was a bridesmaid. Ooh. And that all the groomsmen were like, hey, we're going to do this like fun, sexy magic mic dance. <laughs> and, and they were like, do you want in? I was like, yeah, I can learn choreography fast. <laughs> and, and I just had this dream that they did this move with a chair and I fell over <gasps> and rolled several times and, and I got too wasted. And that the next day, my friend was like, we need to talk. Oh, no. I was like, is Marky Mark mad? <laughs> anyway, there should be a movie with someone named Sharky Shark. That's Sharky. all I'm saying. There you go. Uh-huh. <laughs> Support for today's episode comes from Lumen. Lumen is the world's first handheld metabolic coach. It's a device that measures your metabolism through your breath. And on the app, it lets you know if you're burning fat or carbs and gives you tailored guidance to improve your nutrition, your workouts, your sleep, and even stress management. So what you do is you breathe into your lumen first thing in the morning, and then you'll know what's going on with your metabolism. Whether you're burning mostly fats or carbs, I breathed into my lumen right before reading this ad, and turns out I have a low carb day ahead of me. They give me a plan for my day that says how many grams of carbs, proteins, or fats I should be aiming for, whether my body currently, as of the morning that I'm reading this, is burning mostly fats or carbs, and then it gives you a personalized nutrition plan for the day it's based on these measurements you can also breathe into it before and after workouts and meals so you know exactly what's going on with your body in real time if you love data this is for you and lumen will give you tips on how to keep at the top of your health game they also give you like a food log and meal planning ideas recipes all kinds of things are right here your metabolism is your body's engine it's how you turn the food that you eat into the fuel that keeps you going because your metabolism is at the center of everything your body does optimal metabolic health translates to a bunch of benefits including easier weight management improved energy levels better fitness results better sleep etc and they measure everything for you in this app lumen gives you recommendations to improve your metabolic health across the board it can also track your cycle as well as the onset of menopause and adjust your recommendations to keep your metabolism healthy through hormonal shifts so you can keep your energy and stave off cravings this is a very fun very easy very data-driven system if you are at all interested in getting more of a handle on your metabolic health it is like i said at the center of your entire well-being so if you want to take the next steps in improving your health go to lumen.me slash tmgw to get 15 percent off of your lumen that's l-u-m-e-n dot m-e slash tmgw for 15 percent off your purchase one more time lumen.me slash tmgw for 15 percent off your lumen thank you lumen for sponsoring this episode if I said it once, I said it a trillion times. I freaking love Audible, okay? I've loved it for a million years, and honestly, that love has just gotten stronger, especially with our Barflies book club here. Um, I listen to audiobooks on Audible all the freaking time. I have so much fun doing it. And listening to Audible can help your imagination soar. Whether you're listening to stories, motivation, expert advice, any genre that you're into, you can be inspired to imagine new worlds, new possibilities, and ways of thinking. Listening can lead to positive change in your mood, your habits, ultimately your overall well-being, okay? You are going to learn. Your mind is going to expand. You go take that mental health walk. You put on an Audible, whether it's an Audible original, an Audible original podcast, or a book oh, maybe even Carrie Soto is back Grace's pick for the um, next bar flies honey your mind is only expanding okay find the genre you love and discover new ones explore bestsellers new releases plus thousands of audiobooks podcasts originals that members can listen to all they want with more added all the time enjoy audible anytime while you're doing household chores exercising on the road commuting 
on a plane that has spotty Wi-Fi. Whatever you need, you got it on Audible. Audible makes it easy to be inspired and entertained as part of your everyday routine without needing to set aside extra time. So there's more to imagine when you listen. So if you would like to give it a shot, I myself have been an Audible member for, I think, going on like eight years or something. But you, if you haven't tried it, you're missing out. So sign up for a free 30-day Audible trial and your first audiobook is free. So visit audible.com slash tmgw. That's audible.com slash tmgw so we know and they know that we sent you. This might get read, y'all. Um, I did see a trend that I don't know that you'll be on board for this is it a summer. Rat? It's hot rodent boyfriend summer. Yes, I've seen the articles. Yeah. If we'll this call them is, that. This is the circulating new um, type of men. Hot rodent boyfriend features people who are recognized by unkempt hair, lanky limbs, an angular face, and smaller eyes. <laughs> What's crazy is the pictures I see, the unkempt hair, it's like we're friends with someone who is like a male, like a celebrity male, you know, let's like get them looking good before red carpets. Like there's mm-hmm. nothing that hits a red carpet that isn't meticulously Crafted. curated. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, but I just kind of feel bad because it's like, did they already think they were rodent-like or were they right. like... News to me, I look like a rodent. Yeah, it's the Jeremy Allen White. Hottie. Yeah, I feel like everyone is just trying to figure out what to do with Jeremy Allen White. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. They're just like, what to do with them? We, it's like Pedro Pascal that, like, when he came, all everyone was like, "Whoa, this is like a new type of man." That yeah. I, how do I qualify this for myself? And Jeremy Allen White is like, "Whoa, this is like, am I attracted to this guy?" Yeah, I can't. It's it's a question mark. And uh, Timothy Chalamet, obviously, is it's like uh, people top of the are, list. It's like, uh, it's like news, uh, gossip mags, this type of thing is like, okay, wait a second. People are starting to openly be attracted to personalities. Yeah. We better figure <laughs> out, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh-oh, people learned people can be sexy who don't look traditionally Classically, hot. We better yeah. figure out like some, to make it a trend. Yeah. How do we how do we put buzzwords around this and make it its own category of thing that we can Mm -hmm. all understand and organize in our brains? So one of the rap boys, Mm -hmm. um, I'm blanking on his name, but he's dating Sabrina Carpenter from Saltburn. You know what I'm talking about? uh, Are you not in this gossip mix? No, I've been look, I've been looking. I've been offline. So this is the most I've looked at the Internet. Um this morning was just to figure out Barry Ke- Ke- Keegan, Keo. Keegan Keo? whatever yeah he's also know. on this list of rap boys yeah he's yeah that's what I'm saying um but he rap boys rap boys just, <laughs> rap oh, boy my summer. nightmare my nightmare <laughs> but so he is with Sabrina Carpenter uh-huh. and she's having like the best summer ever she's killing it she's nice. like uh, every festival but she hard launched with a music video with him where they're like oh. a Bonnie and Clyde type Wow. Wait, hard launched their relationship that way? Yes. Wow. And I don't know if this is real, but apparently he's on Instagram Uh and she's uh, like, he like went on Instagram, started an Instagram. She's in his like profile pic and he only follows her. And for me, Mm. I'm like, pump the brakes, rat boy. (laughs) (laughs) This is a Hollywood relish. (laughs) I'm a hot young thing. You are the rat boy of the summer. You know what I mean? Like, I'm watching it. I'm watching it being like, ugh, (laughs) he is not traditionally hot. So I'm just kind of like, listen, ride out the salt burn (laughs) flavor of the month. But like, maybe don't hard launch and only follow one person on Instagram. (laughs) Um, People out there doing wild things on social media. It is interesting to follow. Um, I had a question. Maybe we've talked about this on the podcast before, but... When you put your underwear on, brown Uh-oh. underwear, okay. what do you put on first? Wow. Like if I'm just walking <laughs> up, getting dressed. Yeah. Because I was thinking I... about, because so Probably I... my bra. Really? Yeah. This is fascinating because I got out of the shower the other day and I put my bra on first and I felt so vulnerable. It feels and I very realized, Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. I realized that, oh, I normally put my underwear on first most of the mm. time, just unconsciously. Had a habit or whatever, 
and I was like, what is normal? <laughs> what is, yeah. is there one way versus the other? Well, I don't know. I guess I'm thinking I put bra on first because I, well, I'm thinking mainly today because I put on a dress and yeah. I like just free, free balled for right. about an hour. You know what I mean? But what's interesting, maybe it is underwear because I'm wondering if there's a subconscious like, you put on the thing first yeah. that like if someone walked in the room, you wouldn't want them to see. That's I think what I was trying to <clears throat> figure that out, too. I was like, I feel way more vulnerable Winnie the Poohing it than if I just put some underwear on. Mm. So this must well, be like how I my body's been like protect the southern mm. region first and then work your way up. Yeah. No, it is interesting because. OK, it, yeah. If someone walked in on me. <laughs> Would I want to have on panties and immediately take my hands and cover my boobs? Right. Or would I want my boobs to be covered and I immediately do one of those like cover them? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that feels harder to do. That feels a little harder to do, especially like if my house was on fire and yeah. I was naked and I had to like get Which dressed and get out of there. First? I I grab underwear. I think. I don't. I know. honestly don't know. I think I'd look hotter in panties, running, holding my boobs. <laughs> but also, I'm kind of like. Uh, like it would the, be more uh, awkward to region. run it's more like you, to, you've seen one you've seen them all you run and cover your vagina is a very awkward it's a, vignette it's and a funnier I one it's what it's a funnier one it's yeah it's less sexy than the other one i think also you don't have anything to cover <laughs> on your back when it's boobs like right. if you if you put on a bra and you ran out of a burning building and you right. covered the cooch yeah. you're not covering the butt right they're still right. seeing something for free Right, right. So I feel like I'm going to mm. go two for one and put some underwear on okay. and then figure out the rest. Just it cross my mind. I'm fascinated, guys, that if you're listening, what's your process? Is what there is one the that's more popular over the other? I have no now, idea. Now, let me ask you this. It's like, mm -hmm. is, are there people out there, because the reverse sounds crazy, who yeah. put on their underwear put on their pants and then start the second half That's because putting on a bra putting on a shirt before even engaging in the lower half i yeah. think is psychotic yeah wait putting on a bra putting on a shirt while before. you're still just total winnie the pooh yeah that's crazy that's I feel crazy like you gotta but also putting on underwear and putting pants on before you put a bra on also feels crazy I don't know. I kind of like Maybe. to model around, be like, oh, look at these high waisted jeans. And <laughs> Calvin like, Klein I'm ad. a Klein ad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. Of like, could I get away with this look? You know. Yeah. Uh, also, like, how tight are these pants? How loose of a shirt do I need? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So just oh, food what for are, thought. Were you high when you thought of that? Not at all. Really? This was a middle of the day. I got out of the shower after working out and. I wondered what was, if there was a normal, what was, it's the same way that people ask, like, do you wash your legs in the shower? Which I do, but I didn't know yeah, that that was a thing too. that people don't do. I've also they heard people don't wash their feet. And I'm like, are you That's wild. crazy? Yeah. The feet are the dirty parts. <laughs> the dirty, yeah. They're the dirtiest part. I feel like everything goes down there and stays there. Mm -hmm. um, here's a, here's a thing that's happening that gets on my nerves. Okay. Or not even gets on my nerves. I'm actually kind of like delighted and like a that's that's wild way. Okay. Is I've noticed I'm still on Facebook because it's how mm. I communicate with a few people in my life. And I yeah. also just like the memories. I've talked about this before. Yeah. I like how it's like on this day, six years ago, your first book came out. And I'm like, this is a fun little romp down memory lane totally. that like I don't get from my phone because like I've had a million phones, you know? Yeah. I kind of wish they would do it on Instagram. Yeah. I'm shocked actually that they don't. That they're like, hey, here's a photo on this exact day eight years ago. Instead of scrolling all the way back, do you yeah. want to like post it on your story? Hey, that'd be nice. Why hey. don't we have that? <laughs> but what kills me is I've noticed a lot. And it's it's mainly just like older women in North Carolina that are like friends, moms or like an old lady I went to church with, whatever. Okay. They are using the AI apps to like make like really look good. And yeah. I'm not saying like they're putting a filter on a picture. I'm saying they're like, if you put in like one pic and you're like, make me look like I'm on a snowy mountain with a cute new haircut. Uh -huh. They're they're posting photos that look nothing like them, like totally gasified, created from the mind of AI <laughs> and posting them without any context. With so, no like this is obviously AI, but no mention, no anything. No. It'll be like, here I am in like a Santa hat with like a bob, an AI like 
I'm 20 years younger face, like <laughs> yeah. whatever. And all the comments are just like, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> you look great. Never stop. Beautiful. <laughs> Stunning. And like with what? responses just being like, thank you. What? Thank you, Bill. And I'm like, this, are we not? And I mean, like, I'm thinking of a couple people in particular where I'm just like, are you wow. serious? They are. Yeah. It's, um, it's like, it, I'm assuming this is an old, like boomer demographic. It's, it's boomer. It's boomer behavior. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, look, we got the internet tools first. And yeah. so we're fucked up in our own way about that. And then the Gen Z's got it. And then the boomers got it. And what they're doing with it is just lawless. It's really embarrassing. <laughs> But that's the culture of the boomer community that like beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And there's like dopamine hits of attention. Hey, who am I to judge? But it is like it's true. Very outside the realm of what I would do in any serious way. <laughs> and just like earnestly thanking. Yeah. The sincerity of it. <laughs> Thanks. I but did look good that night. It's like, I know. What? It's hilarious and also horrifying when you think about like the impact as this yeah. like goes on that like we're never going to know what's real ever. Ever. <laughs> like, that could ma make you mad. Yeah. It does. Anyway, it's just like there's like a few people that me and my mom <laughs> talk back and forth about. And one of them is the person who always does that. Wow. And then there's another girl in, in the county who thinks she's dating Lady Gaga's ex-boyfriend who's on that um, <laughs> Chicago fire show. Oh, wow. And wow. fully like posts like stuffed animals from CVS being like, my baby got me this. What? And then, and then like, they're like, who are you dating? And it's like posted a pic and they're like, the actor? And she's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they're like, where does he live? And she's like, Chicago. Oh. It's fully Ooh. like, I know, posted like a world's Tough. greatest dad mug and was like, look what my baby got me. And I'm like, so you're dating Lady Gaga's ex-boyfriend uh, in <clears> Jonesville, <throat> North Carolina. <laughs> anyway, people and people are in the comments being like, you don't send him money, do you? Like, right, like, right. We don't need like, to break your heart, but oh, ma'am. Man, I everyone's know. out there doing stuff on the internet. It is I wild. Know. I will say it is refreshing to take a bit of a break from yeah, it. Yeah, how's that going for you? Great. And also I feel a little like very out of the loop. Mm. on things but also like in a nice way it's like um honestly like detoxing like okay. it uh, it did take a few days but i've been writing more which is great i realized that like i my brain is so add as an adult yeah. like i need zero distractions to mm -hmm. like sit down and get myself to write i can no longer multitask and like no. shoot a video and do this and do that all in the same day like i need to be completely like isolated and it's been I going agree. well and it's been like nice to be like oh man confronting that pang of like feeling like i have to keep up yeah. with like internet stuff right now so it's just kind of nice to like practice like distance from it Me you know? meanwhile i had an hour convo this morning with ashley being like i've got to figure out a schedule i gotta be more well, that's consistent the on the internet that's the thing is that i it was so stressful because i was just sort of like floating in this limbo of like i'll just post whenever i want but then i was just thinking right constantly about that so now yeah. i'm like if whenever i my break is over i'm gonna like figure out a schedule like i need yes. um organizational systems to yeah, exist like, within i'm more stressed not working out than if i just did it right yeah this is coming from someone who hasn't worked out in weeks but like <laughs> thinking about doing it yeah. Takes a lot more time than actually doing it. And such is life. Hey. And such is life. Say la vie. You Say know? la vie gesundheit. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm going to hop off here because I'm driving to Asheville. I'm about to check into a little river cabin. I'm picking up Ooh. Chip in four hours from the airport with Larry David. It's going to oh be God. a whole ass vibe. I know. You got an exciting week ahead. I'm excited to do a podcast next week and hear all about it. It's going to be very fun. Um, also, for y'all listening, uh, Patreon members or people who are thinking about it, we are going to have one of our monthly live streams, not this Sunday, but the next, the 23rd. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we'll figure out a theme. We'll do all that. But if you are thinking of joining Patreon and getting some of those fun little perks and parties that we do, this would be <laughs> a great time to do it. 
Yeah, and I've taken a little break from writing over there, but I'm going to try to kick back up this week. Um, and so, yeah, and then we also have Barflies on the 30th, which oh, we're reading. Yeah. Oh, my God, I'm obsessed with... Um, well, it's your, in your tennis era. Exactly. That I'm like, Carrie Soto is back. Like, Taylor Jenkins Reid, like, I get it. You get it now. You like, get it now. I burned through half the book on a flight. Like, I was like, whoa, I see how people read books quickly when they yeah. just sit and read and do nothing else. <laughs> okay, my goal is to get back to L.A. next week and read it and be uh, a, fly, a, a fly on the wall, if you it's, will. Yeah, there you go. It's an easy read. It's very fun. I'll join the chat. Woohoo! Oh, my God. <laughs> that is so fun. Okay, fun. well, next time we talk, I will have seen Chapel Rowan and Meg the Stallion live, so I will be forever changed. Changed. oh my god so oh my god. um i'm excited to do that and also yep. this got weird oh yeah